Hey, what is going on everyone? This is Chip Mist here and today we are going to be taking a look at the features of OS X El Capitan. So it just came out yesterday and uh, it was out for public and you can download it through the uh, Mac App Store. You can just go ahead and go to the App Store and search for El Capitan. Probably won't even have to search for it. It'll be in the front page itself. I don't know why my internet is being so slow right now. But um, yeah, so as you can see El Capitan here and you can go ahead and uh, download that. It's probably around like a 6.6 .6 GB download, so uh, it's probably going to take a little while, if, especially if you're on a slow internet connection, but uh, it's definitely worth it, and I would go ahead and recommend you to go do it. So uh, let's go ahead and see what are the main features that are included in El Capitan. So um, they went with this name because uh, the previous version was Yosemite, and this is just a part of the Yosemite National Park, and I think that's why they just uh, went with this. Um, Regardless, uh, the name does not matter. It's the features that are the main important things. So let's go ahead and check it out. Um, so the one of the most uh, important things in OS X is uh, Spotlight, at least for me. Um, if I'm searching for something, this is where I go. Um, you know, I just press command space and Spotlight opens up and you can search for it. And they've made the Spotlight search more intuitive and more smarter. So I can go ahead and search for weather and state college. And it's gonna go ahead and show me the weather in State College, Pennsylvania, where I am right now. Um, I don't know if you can change the settings of this uh, into Celsius or not, but um, as far as right now, you know, uh, it's cloudy and it's 54 Fahrenheit and so on. Um, and one of the other few features that they've added is that if you're using multiple monitors, just like I am, I'm even using multiple monitors right now, and it, sometimes it gets really hard to find out where your mouse is. And you know, you have to move your mouse around like two or three seconds to find out like where your mouse is actually. Uh, hanging out in what screen so uh, there's a simple thing you can do right now is like just shake the mouse and it'll become like huge and so you can you know just pinpoint the location of the mouse and uh, you know this is not something that you would necessarily be using a lot but uh, it's definitely good to have apart from that uh, they also added uh, like what documents I made yesterday and you know it'll show me all the documents I made yesterday as you can see um, so yeah like this is pretty intuitive and you know you can just type whatever you want natural language and it's gonna bring out uh, whatever it needs to uh, clearly like you know they added Siri like benefits to this and uh, it's probably going to be useful just for some people and probably not going to be as useful for some other people so it's basically dependent on you whether how much usefulness you can get out with it um, other very important feature that they added according to me personally is that uh, they added the they really revamped the full screen outlook so uh, suppose I have this I have this uh, particular web page right here and I want to make this full screen and since uh, as you can see this is like a format and I want to write a thesis or like a paper based on this format and uh, let's go ahead and see I have this uh, particular uh, word document open right here and what I can do now is that I can go ahead and drag this document into that Google Chrome and as you can see it shows me like a split screen window sort of situation and I can go ahead and now it created a space which has like split screen options so I can like have it as half and half and I can you know work on this here and uh, while I can look at this as well so I this is like pretty fun to use um, I would say this is pretty useful in general if you're writing if you're working on multiple documents or if you want to refer to multiple documents at once um, this does not work with older versions of uh, processes right now. So if you have like an older application which hasn't been updated yet to support OS X, you probably won't be able to use this uh, as far as right now. I'm using uh, Office 2016 and you know, Chrome. So all the web browsers are pretty much updated. So the, you can use it with them and you can use it in mo most of the inbuilt Mac applications as well. I'm going to go ahead and some of the other features of this uh, is notes. So they did make notes pretty useful so suppose I'm writing things to do and I want to create a list so I can go ahead and create a check mark buy milk buy scotch tape and so on and so uh, once I'm done with a particular thing I can just you know tick it and uh, blah 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 and I can tick this and so um, it remind me that I've done all of these things and so on so it's basically like remainders but in notes I use my notes for most of my uh, note keeping so if I owe someone money or someone owes me money this is where I keep them and uh, 
well, I guess uh, this will make it much easier to do so. Again, um, as far as you can see, uh, I don't know if you have done it already or not. If you have already upgraded, you might have seen a significant improvement in speed and you know all the spotlight search and uh, expose features in Mac OS X. And uh, suppose if you're a person who uses multiple windows, especially if someone like if if you're bound to use multiple windows all the time, then I think uh, you're gonna find this much better than Yosemite. Yosemite was full of bugs. Like, okay, expose on Yosemite was awful. If I had to switch displays and switch between multiple screens at once, it was so annoying. And uh, I think they improved this a lot in uh, El Capitan. And uh, they also added an option of having dashboard, just like Yosemite, but I think there are some bugs as you can see here, like, uh, this is pretty much messed up. Um, some of the widgets need to be upgraded and so on. So I guess, you know, they will do that in the future. And uh, I guess we just have to wait for a bug fix or so. But overall, I think they improved this version of OS X a lot. And I would definitely, you know, suggest this to anyone who wants to use it. They added iCloud Drive as well in this. So you can go ahead and browse your iCloud Drive. So I have this, uh, I have all the documents on iCloud Drive. I can go ahead and visit my uh, text edit documents. And I can even upload from this. So if I want to save something directly to that cloud drive so I can, you know, view it on my phone and want to attach it from my phone, I can do that. So there's a lot of seamlessness going on here. And I think that's pretty good, the direction that Apple has been going uh, with, like, you know, combining and unifying all the operating systems such as iOS and Mac and, you know, making them work very s seamlessly. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, there are a couple of things I wish... Um, Apple would have added like the Windows NT file system support. I would have definitely enjoyed having that. But then again, there are so many third party tools that you can install uh, to have that. So it's not really a big deal. Uh, apart from that, I don't think I have anything bad to say about this operating system. So uh, go ahead and download it. It's free. You can go ahead and find it out in the Mac App Store. And uh, it's a pretty big update. So make sure that you have uh, enough battery life and uh, you know time to do it. Apart from that, uh, that's all. If you want any other videos, uh, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel and like this video. That really helps me out a lot. And um, if you want, you can go ahead and share it on Facebook and Twitter with your friends so they can watch it as well. Apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.